So example two, given that xn, given that xn, given that xn is an approximation to the root of the equation, given that xn is an approximation to the root of the equation, given that xn is an approximation to the root of the equation, x cubed minus plus x minus 6 is equal to 0. Given that xn is an approximation to the root of the equation, x cubed plus x minus 6 is equal to 0. Use Newton Raphson method. Use the Newton Raphson method. Use the Newton Raphson method to show that a better approximation. Use the Newton Raphson method to show that a better approximation is given by to show that a better approximation is given by xn plus 1 is equals to 2 xn cubed minus 1 over 3 xn square plus 1 Given that xn is an approximation of the equation x cubed plus x minus 6 is equal to 0, then you'll be told to use the Newton Raphson's method to show that and a better approximation is given by xn plus 1 is equal to 2xn cubed minus 1 all over 3xn squared plus 1. So they're trying to tell you to. derive that, isn't it? And you see very well we say that the root of an equation is a point where the, the solution, a point of the solution of the equation, isn't it? So at the root of the equation you get the function f of x is, is zero. Meaning the equation you've been given must be equated to zero. So if there's anything on this side you must bring it on the, on the left hand side, isn't it? To make it equal to zero, isn't it? So the equation we have is what? x cubed plus x minus 6 is equal to? So, if the root of the function at the point where the function is 0, you get the root, isn't it? So, f of x is equal to 0 and the equation is equal to 0. So, it means f of x is equal to this, isn't it? Are we together? So, this implies the two equations are equal. So, it means f of x is equal to x cubed plus x minus 6 because both of them are equal to 0. For you to find the root of an equation, the function must be equal to zero, isn't it? Yes. So we've now found the function f of x. So after getting the function f of x, we must get the derivative of this function, isn't it? So when we differentiate f of x, we get f prime of yes. f prime of x. And you can see this is a polynomial, isn't it? So to differentiate a polynomial, it is the power times the coefficient. Then you reduce the power by one, isn't it? So you can see the coefficient here is one. So it is three times one you get. 3x, then you reduce the power by 1, isn't it? Then, here is x raised to power 1. So, 1 times 1 you get, plus 1, you reduce the power by 1. See, x raised to power 0. See, this raised to power 0 is 1. When you differentiate a constant, you get 0. Are we together? Are we together? When you differentiate x raised to power 1, you get x raised to power 0. And x raised to power 0 is what? Is 1. When you differentiate x raised to power 3, you will remain with x raised to power 2. Are you seeing that? Yes. You reduce the power by 1. Okay? So we have f of x and f prime of x. So what do you do? For you to iterate, meaning you must have xn, isn't it? For you to iterate, meaning where there is x, you simply add n. Are we together? So where there is x, you add n to it. You add n to, to the x. You add n to the x. So we found f of xn and f prime of xn. Is that understood? Now, having found f of xn and f prime of xn, what do we do? We write the Newton Raphson's method, isn't it? We know in the Newton Raphson's method, xn plus 1 is equal to? Is equal to xn, isn't it? Are we together? Minus f of x 
then you differentiate f of x, isn't it? If you differentiate f of x, you get f prime of x, then you put your n. So n, n. Are we together? Is that okay? So this is the Newton Epsilon formula. Then after this, so you look for the LCM. You look for that? LCM. So LCM means you put this over one, isn't it? So if you put that over the one, you get xm plus 1 is equal to simply cross multiply this times this, then minus this times this over this, isn't it? Send it So the LCM is the product 1 times that. So the LCM is f prime of xn. So one, one goes here. Looking for the LCM is just like cross multiplying this times this, isn't it? And this times that, isn't it? Are we together? So it is this times this, meaning xn times x prime of xn. Then we have subtraction in between there, isn't it? Then this times that, isn't it? That is minus f of xn, isn't it? Then everything is over that times that which was the LCF, isn't it? Are we together? Yes. Are we together? Good. Now how do we found this? The next thing, we do the substitution. We've already found xn and f prime of xn, isn't it? So we now substitute the values in the formula. And any time you are substituting anything, you put it inside that, inside the bracket. So here we have xn plus 1 is equal to xn times f prime of xn. Put it in bracket to show one thing, isn't it? Are we together? So what is f prime of xn? 3? Let me see no space there. So xn plus y is equal to xn, then times f prime of xn, you found is 3? 3xn plus, plus 1. So you put the whole of it in bracket to show that the whole of it is f prime of xn, isn't it? Yes. Then it is minus, put the bracket to show the whole of that is f of xn. And f of xn you have is, this one is highlighted, isn't it? It is xn, q, Plus, plus xn minus, minus 6. Then everything is over. Everything is over f prime of xn, isn't it? f prime of xn is 3xn squared plus, plus 1. So the next thing is to open the bracket because we are now simplifying, isn't it? Are we together? So open the bracket, xn times 3xn squared, meaning xn times xn squared, you get xn cubed, isn't it? So it is 3xn cubed. Are we together? 3xn cubed. Then xn times 1 plus xn, isn't it? Then the negative goes inside the bracket, isn't it? So negative times xn cubed, you get minus negative into positive minus xn. Negative into negative positive 6, isn't it? Then it is over 3 3 xn squared then plus plus 1. So the next step, simplify. So join the x and cube together. We have here 3 x and cube, then here minus x and cube, meaning minus 1, isn't it? So what do you have? Positive 3 and negative 1 you get? So you get 3 minus 1. See this is positive 3, this is negative 1. Yes. So positive 3 and negative 1, so you get positive 2. You go to the counter and you press 3 and minus 1. See, that is 2. So, there. See, you are joining this and this. Because both of them is x and q. Yes. It is 3, x and q, and then we have minus x and q, meaning there's a silent one. So, if you factorize out a common factor x and q, you remain with 3 minus 1, isn't it? Which is 2 x n. So, this and this gives you 2. 2 x and q, isn't it? See, I'm done with this and this. The next one. Positive xn and negative xn. This and this is 0, isn't it? Then, which one is left? Positive 6 plus 6, isn't it? Over. Over what? 3xn plus plus 1. We together there. Is that okay? So this is xn plus xn plus plus 1. So here
was a problem with that, isn't it? We have two x n q plus plus six over three x n square plus plus one. Two x n q plus six. But I'm meaning this right. This negative one was there, isn't it? So this was supposed to be plus six. Plus six. That was there. Oh, it is plus six. It is plus six. I'm the one who wrote my own thing. Are you see? It is two x n cubed plus plus six. I'm the one who confused. You know when I copy paste, it was plus six. And that is exactly what we have. Meaning what you will get after working it out is always the right thing. Meaning if that is the error, you will go back to the equation and see that you are the one who made the mistake recording it, isn't it? Are we together? So you've actually shown that xn plus 1 is equal to 2xn cubed plus 6 over 3xn squared plus 1. Is actually there? Yes, it is actually what you are look, looking for there. The better approximation is given by, by when xn plus 1 is equivalent to, to that. So you have justified that to be that. Okay? Are we together? Very good. So that was simple.